guys, so today I'm going to talk quickly about some science writing tips and I want you to know that writing for science class isn't any different than writing for English class or history class. There's just a few tiny details that we're particular about in the science world that I wanted to point out and give you some general pointers for how uh, to be the best writer you can be in uh, high school biology and beyond. So again, science writing is not that scary. There's just a few important details that we don't want to miss. Um, first of all, you might have heard your English teacher say, like, don't write in the passive voice. Um, be active. And that's great, especially for English class. But in uh, science classes, we want to sort of take ourselves out of the equation sometimes. So you're going to write um, in a passive voice sometimes in science. You want to avoid using I or we when you can. Um, a general way to do this, to say if you were doing an experiment, instead of saying like, we found or we observed, you could say it was found that, or even better, the researchers found. Um, so that way we're avoiding uh, ourselves in uh, the, the sentence and it makes it seem a little bit more uh, formal and more objective rather than subjective. So for example, this is from a paper last year from one of the students who did a case study project with me. Um, it says, after researching previous patients with similar symptoms and travel history, the team concluded the patient most likely had amoebiasis caused by the parasitic protozoan Entamoeba histolytica. So that way they're talking about what they found without talking about we in the sentence. Um, so that brings me to the next thing that's important in science and that's scientific names. Okay, so you know that every living organism is given a scientific name. It's two words made up of the genus and the species. So for this amoeba, it's Entamoeba histolytica. Now it's written in a special way and it's always written this way, especially when you type and that's italicized. You always want to italicize scientific names no matter what the context is, no matter if it's in a title, in a paragraph, in the middle. Um, so we are, our scientific name is Homo sapiens. And the other special thing about scientific names, and this trips up a lot of students, is that the first word has a capital letter at the start and the second word has a lowercase letter at the start. So this is tricky to get the hang of, but once you start doing it, you'll get into the habit. So Homo sapiens, capital H, sapiens, lowercase Let's look at some other examples. Homo sapiens, that's us. Gallus gallus, that is the chicken. Um, that's its scientific name, it's gallus gallus. I think it's silly. Um, but the first G is capital, the second G is lowercase. Two words, um, always italicized. Ananas camosus, that's the pineapple. Again, capital A, lowercase c. Giardia lamblia, that's one of our parasites that we talked about. Um, and Yersinia pestis, that's the plague. Um, you can also see for scientific names, sometimes having the first word abbreviated. So E. coli is a common abbreviation of a bacteria we know, and the E is that first word with the period after it, and coli is the actual species. So Yersinia, pe Yersinia pestis could be abbreviated as Y. pestis if you wanted to. All right, so even in titles, remember, do not forget to write your scientific names properly. Always, always when you type them, italicize them with the correct, correct capitalization. Um, Here's a couple of articles I pulled. So a dreadful case of Entamoeba histolytica. You guys see how the title, even in the title, was italicized. Now, if you want to avoid putting the scientific name in the title, that's okay too. Um, here it just says death by amoeba. And since amoeba isn't technically the scientific name, we don't have to italicize it. And this is from a real article. So let's check out the real article I screenshotted. So death by amoeba, a nibble at a time. Um, and then you see once the article starts, we have the actual scientific name of the organism, Entamoeba histolytica, and it's italicized sized and written correctly. So make sure you do that in your papers too. Okay, let's talk about sources. Always try to use reputable sources. We've talked about what those are. Things like .gov, .edu, those are all good. Peer-reviewed journals, those are fine. Um, WebMD, not so good. So take a look at our resources we know for finding reputable sources. Um, if you are using a source of an information that is something you did not come up with on your own, something you didn't learn on your own, um, you're probably gonna have to cite that as um, one of your sources that you use. So keep track of all the websites you go to as you're learning about your disease or whatever you're researching. It doesn't have to be a disease. Um, so, and in general, if you find a quote that you really like and it's just some general words, a good rule to go by is if it's more than three words long, you should use quotations. You should quote that source directly, so use quotation marks. So if this example here says, according to the CDC, the, whoever wrote this found that this part particularly 
to be important, so they put it in quotations, four kinds of malaria parasites infect humans. And then they did an insect in-text citation, which is even better. So this is in, uh, I think, APA format, which is one of the formats you can use. And if you're not familiar with this, I'm not going to be super picky about it, but just pay attention to what your teacher's requirements are for um, in-text citations if you use them. Um, so it comes from an article at the CDC called Malaria Frequently Asked Questions, uh, published 2017. Uh, July 10th is when it was updated. And then the article continues. There are other types of malaria that can cause disease in chimpanzees. And this is from another article. Um, and again, this person didn't quote the text because they didn't use any words directly from the other person, but they did use information from another source. So this is a type of plagiarism that actually trips up a lot of science students in that they uh, use information from other sources. They don't directly type the same words as in the other source, but because they're not citing that other person as one of their research sources, um, they're actually they are plagiarizing their work. So it's important to cite everywhere that you get information from, even if you, um, you know, you're not quoting their direct words. Um, at the end of your work, you should always cite your sources. This is in uh, a format pulled from a scientific journal article. Again, I'm not super picky about the format. You can choose one or the other, APA or MLA, um, and cite all of your sources. But as long as you have them, I will be happy. But make sure you check with your teacher or the assignment at hand for what you are required to do. Just in general, writing tips for science class, use simple language, use correct grammar. So simple language, um, you know, you don't have to make it super flowery and fancy. I'm not going to grade you on how poetic you are. The easier you can get your ideas across, you know, it's generally better to use simple words to convey complex ideas because that's easier for the reader. Um, so make sure you keep it as plain and simple as possible. You don't have to uh, flower it up. Um, use correct grammar. Again, if you are writing a sentence, make sure you punctuate it correctly and make sure you end the sentence so it's not a run on. It's very easy to sort of type your stream of consciousness out. Please go back and check for that. Take to the time to spell check. If I see a document with little red lines underneath of it, that just shows me you're lazy. Um, Capitalize, please, beginnings of sentences and proper nouns. Don't forget that. Take the time to provide details and examples. The more details and examples you provide, the stronger your argument or your explanation will be, and that'll get your ideas across better. And always write, especially in science, as if the reader doesn't know you. So don't assume that, you know, I'm reading this, I know your personality, I know what you mean. You gotta kinda go that extra step and explain what you actually mean, even if, uh, you know, I was there for the entire assignment or experiment and I know what happened. So don't reference me in the, uh, in the particular uh, assignment. Don't say, like, Miss Reed gave us these instructions and you know what happened next. Um, and that's just something that is for some of you is natural, but to others of you, it takes a little bit of time to get a hang of. So those are my general writing tips. Most importantly, follow our scientific name rules, of course, in citing sources, and try your best to uh, work with the others. All right, thanks, guys.